Hey, Reborn Nurses, it is Monday, the start of another amazing week. And we are on the journey, of course, to pass NCLEX. I got some topics for you to study, and it's going to be a great motivation today. We are always studying out of my NCLEX virtual trainer. You guys know this is where I keep all of my content, all of my lectures, all of my homework for you to pass your NCLEX exam. This is your year. This is your year. Also, when you get the virtual trainer, you cannot forget my quick facts for NCLEX. This is the five-star version, the most updated, quick, straight to the point information. Plus, this houses all of your pharmacology and pharmacology is our topic for today. You guys, I had so many emails from nursing students over the past like few weeks that said there was a ton of pharmacology on um, my NCLEX and I'm so glad that I had the quick facts for NCLEX. But every now and then I'll get an email and it'll say, hey Regina, I did see some medications or can you go over this medication or what is this medication? And so it's, it's very, um, and, you know, it's very difficult for me to answer, how do I know medications that I have not seen before? And so I don't know how to answer, the, answer that question. But what I do know how to do is provide you guys with more information inside of your virtual trainer. So what I wanted to bring note of today for our how to pass NCLEX are two things. One of them is that if you don't have the virtual trainer, you need to get it, okay? Because I cannot in an email <laughs> teach you everything in just one email. And so this is where I tell you guys to go. Um, the another thing in the virtual trainer is your file vault. And that is so important. Do not neglect your file vault in the virtual trainer because that is where I put updated NCLEX information. And also that is where I can give you guys more, uh, more things to study by your request okay so today i will be highlighting the file vault and particularly the drug cards in your file vault the drug cards in your file vault hey nicole thanks for watching i see your question you asked can i still use the old quick facts so the quick facts that i recommend studying from is my updated one it's the five star quick facts and the reason being is because not only did I add a lot of new topics to the five star quick facts, but also the pharmacology section has been com completely redone. So check it out. If you have it, um, then you guys know that it is perfect. OK. All right. So I have put drug cards in your file vault. Yes. This is another place where you can study your medications. So today I am going to be asking you some questions from the drug cards found in your NCLEX virtual trainer. And I don't have a lot of questions, but I really wanted you guys to see the value in taking that additional step. So there are 15 pages of drug cards in your NCLEX virtual trainer. I today did not have time to study all 15, so I only printed out four, all right, because I was already studying other things. I'm actually going to come back on with another live NCLEX update for you guys after this video. So I was studying that all morning, and I didn't get to do all 15 drug cards. Okay, um, but let me tell you this here. All right, so we're going to go over these four pages of drug cards, and I want you to just try to answer the questions because if you don't know the answers to these questions, then you really need to get into your VT, okay? You really need to get into your virtual trainer. So the first, um, the first drugs that we will be talking about is the succinamides. Succinamides, does anybody know what a succinamide is? It is literally the first drug card that you print out on your file, level, okay? So succinamides. Succinamides are used for what and go. Go ahead and put it on the screen. Smash that share button because we are studying some pharmacology today. And I know your nursing student friends need to get into their virtual trainer to get into this file vault. So anybody have any idea what succinamides are used for? One person does. I know it. They are used for 
No, they are actually used for seizures. They're used for seizures. So the example on your drug card, uh, drug card is ethosoxamide, um, methosoxamide. All right, these are succinamides. And so the, the medications end in mides. It's, it's really easy. It's a cheat code for these medications. All right. Now, my question is, does anybody know uh, any of the adverse effects, any of the negative effects of succinamides? Succinamides. Does anybody know? If you do not know, again, I'm directing you to your virtual trainer because I list them here for you. I took time out to make these drug cards, um, and so I want you guys to know that they're an additional resource. So uh, the side effects are anorexia, nausea, vomiting, okay? And congratulations, it looks like we have um, a Remar nurse that came on and passed, Nurse Denisha Ruffin. She says, I passed my NCLEX RN February 10th, 2021. Glory be to God, and thank you, Regina. I need my Remar shirt. All right, if you passed your NCLEX exam, Denisha, go ahead and go to remarnurse.com forward slash party, party. Um, and then you can get the directions to get your shirt, okay? <laughs> All right, so I'm looking for, I guess you guys don't know this medication. I'm looking for the side effects. Nicole, um, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, great job. We're talking about succinamides. Now, what kind of mental illness does this seizure medication cause? What kind of mental illness does this seizure medication cause? Is there anybody? I see some people that have it. Hey, some people have it. Um, some people have this drug card. And these, again, totally free inside your virtual trainer. There is no kind of upcharge for them. This is literally found in your file vault. And why did I make drug cards? Because I know that there are there are tons of pharmacology. There's tons of pharmacology that is required for you to know as a healthcare pr practitioner. All right, good job, Tiffany. So the correct answer, what type of mental illness does succinamides cause? They are, yes, the, the paranoid psychosis. Good job. I'm moving on um, to my second page of drug cards and we're going to talk about the leukotrienes. I'm going to talk about this now. Let me see. No, let's do nitrates. We're going to go over nitrates. Now, nitrates are, again, in your quick facts for NCLEX. But with the drug cards, what I like about them is that you can actually cut these out. You can cut these out. And so I know people were making um, flashcards from the quick facts. But with the drug cards, once you print them out, you can cut them out. You can write on them. I'm a big writer. You guys know that. I write down things to learn it. So this is what helped me with these drugs. So nitrates. Um, first question about nitrates. Can nitrates cause edema? What do you guys say? Can nitrates cause edema? Yes or no? Yes or no? Think about the purpose of a nitrate. What is it used for? What does it do? We're talking about nitrates. Here, we're talking about passing our NCLEX. It's Monday. We are getting off to a beautiful start, Remar Nurses. We're getting off to a beautiful start this week. Uh, this is a great week for you to feel blessed about preparing for NCLEX. So, yes, nitrates. Good job, Jackie. Good job, Nicole. Um, yes, nitrates can cause edema because they vasodilate. So they, that means they allow fluid they allow things to open up and when something is open like a vessel that means it can hold more things so yes nitrates do cause edema hey how about this question nitrate tablets how often should they be changed how often should nitrate tablets be changed every is it every 30 days is it once a year is it once a month how often? If you don't know, guess where you can find it? On this drug card, on this drug card in your file vault. <laughs> uh, I, yes, I see you. Jordi Ann, you got it right. Good job, guys. It is every six months. Good job. Okay. And then another note to know about nitrates is remember the ratio. No, I'm talking about the, the, the nitrate tablets. The nitrate tablets should be changed every six months, okay? Every six months.
And then remember for the nitrate, when you are giving a tablet, the ratio is the same as a spray. So that means if you have to give one tablet and say the patient's not using tablets, say NCLEX says it's a nitrate spray, then you would give one spray. Uh, so one tablet under the tongue is the same as one spray under the tongue. So you get that. The ratio for spray to tablet is one to one. One to one. All right. Okay. All right. Let's go on to mm, mucolytics. Mucolytics. What are mucolytics used for? What type of medication overdose uses mucolytics? Let's say a few Remar nurses. There's almost 500 of you here. So somebody has that answer. If you're giving a mucolytic, what type of medication overdose has the patient had? Does anybody know? Yes. Good job. Jolene, am I saying that right? Good job. If you are giving a mucolytic, then the client has had a acetaminophen, acetaminophen overdose. Awesome job. Okay. And also I saw somebody put mucolytics was used for colds, which is also true. They help to break down mucus. So you can use them for colds. Also conditions where there is a big mucus buildup. I'm thinking of a I'm thinking of a pediatric condition where the client has a ton of mucus circulating in their respiratory um, system, a ton of mucus in their GI tract. What, what condition am I thinking of that we can use mucolytics for? It's a pediatric condition. You get a lot of mucus built up. Um, it can help to clear out the respiratory tract. What am I thinking of? It's on the drug card, guys. I'm talking about the drug cards from your NCLEX virtual trainer. Ooh. <laughs> this is a good tool for studying today. It kept me busy. Had the baby, had my drug cards. I was busy. Yes, cystic fibrosis. And so when you're looking at these drug cards in particular, they are set up a little bit like your Quick Facts book. But I think I take more um, more care into being specific about the individual uh, medication. Quick Facts has classes, and I, I study the medications by classes, which is great. But also, I take note of individual points. So, for example, I'll have the safe dosage range here for people that want to do a little bit more reading. I also put how often the medication is given, Okay. So cystic fibrosis. Good job, Andrea. Good morning, Lena from California. Okay, we did that one. How about the leukotriene receptor antagonist? Are you guys ready to study that? What are leukotriene receptor antagonists used for? Where can we find this medication to be used. And also if you have a if you have an example of a leukotriene receptor antagonist, go ahead and put it on the screen. Thank you so much, Kajori. She said we can use them for asthma. That's correct. Yes. Tiffany says we're using leukotriene receptor antagonist for asthma. That's right. Okay. I'm looking also in your um, I'm looking in your quick facts book because you can write this in here. If you printed out the drug cards, you can also make notes here where you see similarities, okay? Where you see similarities. And I see you guys putting a medication example there. And I want to make sure that you guys are giving me the generic name and not the trait, not the trait name. Okay. We want to make sure that you're learning because yes, it's singular, but you're not going to see singular on your NCLEX exam. You're going to see the generic name. All right. 
So when I was studying these drug cards today, I looked at it and I wanted to focus in on the mental illnesses or conditions that a medication can cause. So if we're talking about leukotriene receptor antagonists, what type of mental illness or mental condition can these medications cause? What type of mentation changes can this medication for asthma cause? You know, this is another level of studying. This is another level of studying. All right. And the reason why I say that is because you have to understand NCLEX is not just about memorization. Memorization helps to some degree, but you have to be able to anticipate problems. You have to be able to anticipate complications. Yep. You got it. You got it. I see it coming in. Hallucinations. Do you guys have these drug cards? If not, that is your one goal today for how to pass NCLEX. Go into your into your file vault of your virtual trainer and print out the drug cards. All right. Now, let me ask you this. Leukotriene receptor antagonists, do we give them before or after meals? Do we give them before or after meals? We said that they are used to treat asthma. Do you need to give these before or after meals? What do you say? And you guys are doing great today. I hope you are following along and feeling good about talking through this pharmacology. Pharmacology is tough because There we go. Pharmacology is tough because, you know, typically when do we use the term uh, leukotriene receptor antagonist? We, we hardly ever use that term. So it's good that you guys are here to talk through it. Absolutely. I see the right answer. We are given this medication before meals. You give this before meals and um, you usually give it about two hours before your meals. Remember, when you are have difficulty breathing, if you have a lot of mucus, you tend to be a nose or a mouth breather. And so there are certain activities that prevent you from breathing how you typically breathe if you're a mouth breather. If you're used to breathing through your mouth and getting big breaths through your, through your mouth, when you begin to eat and your mouth is full of food, then what happens? You're not breathing through your mouth as much. You're not breathing through your, your mouth as much. And so in order for you not to have the effects of mouth breathing prohibited, you can take a leukotriene receptor antagonist and it'll help you to be able to get rid of mucus, open up your lungs more, feel better, feel better while you're doing things such as eating. Okay. All right, let's go on to barbiturates. Barbiturates are right under leukotriene receptor and um, antagonist. And so the first question that I was, I said to myself, when I was studying barbiturates, I asked myself this, what type of mental condition can precipitate from taking a barbiturate? And barbiturate examples are, you guys know these, I'm not even gonna ask you, phenobarbital, right? Phenobarbital is a barbiturate, it's probably the main one you have to know for NCLEX. So if a patient's taking phenobarbital, what do we need to assess them for as a nurse? Go ahead, put it down on the screen. This is how my name is Regina Callion, MSNRN. If this is your first time watching this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, because I am all about studying for NCLEX and helping you to pass, all right, and teaching you how to use my program uh, for those of you who are studying with me, all right. So, yes, what we expect from what we expect from barbiturate use, mentation-wise, is depression. Mm -hmm. and also suicidal ideation. When clients take phenobarbital, they become depressed. And it is not, it is not something that is expected because the barbiturate is supposed to help you feel better. I saw what you guys wrote. Yes, barbiturates are used for seizure control. And so you think that if your client is in more control, and they're not having as many seizures, they would be happy. They would be happy, 
But if they're taking a barbiturate, then that's not the case. That's not the case. Um, actually, they can become depressed and have suicidal ideation. Another thing I put on the drug card is I put the therapeutic, the therapeutic level for barbiturate. Would anybody like to say what the therapeutic level for the barbiturate is? You do want to know this because medications can become toxic in the body. Medications essentially, I don't even want to say it. It's, it's not correct for me to say medications are poison. I don't want to say that. But what I can say is that medications can create bigger problems than they're trying to solve if they're not controlled. And so the therapeutic range, did anybody get it for the barbiturate? Um, it is 10 to, good job, it is 10 to 40, 10 to 40, excellent. That is the therapeutic level of the barbiturate. So if you don't know, now you know, all right? And I hope you wrote it down because you, you definitely wanna know that. All right, I also have here anti, I printed out this drug card page and it is the anti-tuberculars, uh, anti-tuberculars. And of course, this is to treat tuberculosis. And the doses here, five milligrams per kilogram up to 900, okay? When you talk about medications to treat tuberculosis, the bacteria tuberculosis, what organ is most affected? What organ is most affected when you are taking um, a medication for tuberculosis? Go ahead and put it down on the screen. This is Fast Fingers Monday. We are studying to pass our NCLEX exam. We want that license. We gotta have it. Some of you guys are testing very soon and this is the type of information you need to know. Good job, I see it. When you are giving a client a medication for tuberculosis, you gotta know that their liver will be affected. And I mean negatively affected. I mean negatively affected. Tuberculosis medications are hepatotoxic. And so hepatotoxicity, liver damage. And just in general, the liver is very sensitive to medications because it is responsible for metabolizing all those medications. It is responsible for breaking down all the medications. And so you will see, um, if you're studying your virtual trainer, when we talk about the antibiotics in the virtual trainer, how the liver is affected and what you do to maintain therapeutic levels uh, when you give a medication, okay? Also, next question about the anti-tuberculars. There's a lot of things you can read, but make note about the type of anemia these medications cause. Does anybody know? Does anybody know the type of anemia? It's a specific anemia that is caused by anti-tuberculosis medicine. And I'm going between the two books. <laughs> I'm going between the two books because every time I ask myself a question, um, it leads me to it leads me to one of my uh, books, either the Quick Facts or the, the VT workbook. And so since we're talking about what type of anemia to anti-tuberculosis medications cause, I want you to get out your Quick Facts book because some I see you guys not getting this right. And so I want you to get out your Quick Facts for NCLEX book and on your section for anemia, there is a chart of the different and most important types of anemia that you need to know okay and so everything in the virtual trainer kind of works together um, and it helps to reinforce the concepts that are important so it's aplastic anemia did anybody get that right um alcia yes aplastic anemia good job tiffany this is the type of medication this type of medication will cause aplastic anemia know what aplastic anemia means it's uh it's essential Okay. All right, last one here is mass cell stabilizers. Mass cell stabilizers is right under the anti-tuberculars. Very important that you know what this is for, which is allergic rhinitis. So mass cell stabilizers, very important for allergic rhinitis. 
and know that you can give this medication multiple, multiple times a day, um, up to three or four times a day, which is uh, supposed to be helpful to the client. But think about it, when you're given a medication multiple times a day, what are the effects of that medication going to be? What negative effects are they going to be? I was kind of on the negative side of medications today, wanting to know the adverse effects. So I looked at mental illnesses and also negative effects. All right. Another thing about the Mascal stabilizers that I wrote myself a note was, was how long does it take to see improvement? And for that, up to one week. So this is not a medication that is fast acting. It can take up to one week for improvement. One week for improvement, okay? And yes, good job. The, the side effects of the Mastel stabilizers, the adverse effects, I should say, were nasal burning, nosebleeds, and bronchial spasms. So again, guys, there are so many resources inside of your virtual trainer that are there to help you, not hurt you, not discourage you, but help you through this process. If you don't like studying uh, pharmacology in the back of Quick Facts all the time, print out the drug cards and make notes inside. Draw pictures, color it. It doesn't matter as long as you're doing something. Um, I want to transition just to my motivational thought for this week. Always do a Monday motivation. And for me, that thing that I wanted to tell you guys is just one word this week is clarity. It is clarity. Clarity. You have to be clear on, you have to be clear on what you want. If you want to pass NCLEX this year, you have to be clear on that goal. If you don't want to pass NCLEX, if you want to, you know, learn how to, I don't know, if you want to learn how to ride a bike, if you want to paint your house, if you want to learn to swim, that's totally different than passing your NCLEX. So you have to be clear on what you want. Also, you have to be clear on what it takes to get there. Clarity is our major theme for this week. What are you clear on? What does it take to get there? Are you clear on that? Okay, what type of person do you have to be in order to make that goal happen these are all things that clarity is needed for clarity is needed for because let me tell you something you can have these products very clear <laughs> you can purchase these products but if you are not clear on how do you study the products which is why i come on here every monday all right if you if you're not clear on what sacrifices you need to make in order to study the products then nine times out of 10, you won't study them. There are people every day that buy things they never use. There are people every day that buy things they don't need. Uh, they are called hoarders. All right, have you ever heard of that term before? I don't know if it's just an American term or not, but hoarders buy things and they're not clear on what they're going to do with them. They're not clear on how they will benefit in long-term scenarios okay and so that's what i don't want for you to experience this year i don't want this to be a year of confusion i want this to be a year of clarity and so uh, most of the people most of the people that are watching they they know that they want to pass NCLEX. They're clear on how to pass. They're clear on that they want to pass NCLEX. They're not clear on how to pass NCLEX. So every Monday, my segment is called How to Pass NCLEX. I want you to be clear on that, okay? So I want you to get your virtual trainer. I want you to get these two books with my online lectures, and I want you to study them, okay? That's step one. Step two is being clear on the sacrifices that are needed in order to get this information studied. Purchasing the information is step one, but you still got to study it. You still have to get this information in your mind, okay? And so whatever things that are distracting you this week, be it Netflix, um, you know, be it the nice weather or the bad weather, depending on where you are, um, be it 
tiredness, whatever is distracting you, you have to get clear on the fact that this information has to be studied, has to be mastered in order for you to get to the goal of passing NCLEX. If you don't have the VT, uh, which is a virtual trainer, you can go to remarnurse.com, remarnurse.com. That's my website. That's how you can get your program, okay? Um, and then from there, once you have the program, it ships, the books will ship to you in about two or three days, okay? The books will come to you. But the lectures will be available to you immediately. You can literally go into my course, my class, and you can print your drug cards today. Okay, and you can start studying today. Don't delay. And and look here, I had 15 pages of drug cards. I only printed out the first four. I only printed out the first four because I am clear on my goals today. Okay, I am clear on my goals today. I wanted to study about an hour pharmacology today. And so I was able to do that. And so the virtual trainer is there, but the virtual trainer cannot motivate you to log in. You have to be clear on I log in every day according to my calendar. Okay, so I am uh, I am very encouraged that after today's session, you guys will log off here and go and do what you need to do. I I, I am prayerful that you are clear about what has to take place in order for you to get your nursing license. Getting your nursing license is the goal. Don't lose sight of that. Don't let anything distract you from that. Getting your nursing license is the goal because it is it is essentially the investment in yourself that keeps on giving, okay? Um, and so again, once you get the virtual trainer, you log into it, you go to your file vault. And in your file vault, you go to NCLEX resources, okay? There are, uh, you have your live events, you have your new NCLEX information, but to get the NCLEX drug cards, you need to go to NCLEX resources, okay? NCLEX resources. And so that is where you get the drug cards, all right? And so uh, Nadi says, can you do some review classes again? Actually, all of my best information is in the virtual trainer. So I come on here and I do little videos and short clips of reviews, but my lectures, my full lectures are in the virtual trainer. So that is where I want you to focus. You don't pass NCLEX by coming here once a week. It's what you do when you're by yourself that helps you to pass NCLEX. Because remember, when you take this exam, you're going to be alone. Nobody is going to be there with you. So you need to have a habit of studying deep studying while you are alone, while you are alone, all right? And so that is the purpose of the virtual trainer. That is the purpose, is to train you for success, to train you for success, okay? All right, guys. So actually, I'm getting off here, but I'm coming back on with a live update, and I hope you will check it out. Remember, guys, you can, you will, you must get clear and pass NCLEX, all right? See you guys later. Bye-bye.